Hello everyone, so in this video we are going to be putting a new stereo in my car. So I actually did a live stream putting a reverse camera on the car and that's in conjunction with this stereo. So if you missed that you can go back and look at that. But this is the stereo I'm putting in. Now the funny thing about this stereo is it actually cost more than the car I'm putting it in. Um, it's kind of a weird situation but uh, I plan on keeping the car for a while and the stereo in there is terrible and I hate it every time I drive it and I figured this I can always take out if I ever do want to sell the car but it's just gonna be so much nicer the two main features that I want on this car well there's kind of three I want a backup camera and you have to have a screen to be able to have a backup camera and I wanted wireless Apple CarPlay because I don't want to have to take my phone out of my pocket to listen to music. And I want a volume knob, which is very hard to come by in a big screen display. And this one has that. So let's dive into it and see what's in there. So I did purchase this uh, open box on eBay. It's brand new, never been installed, but it was open box, which is kind of scary for how much it is but it's got some stuff in here so this is the main unit here as you can see it has all the wrapping and stuff on there nothing has actually been used on it at all so we'll set that there this is the main screen which you can see is gigantic it's 10.1 inch display diagonally but, and then it has the volume knob here. So this is a huge display for the car I'm putting it in, but we'll have to see how it looks once we get it in there. And then we have all the adapters. This thing goes on there, I can talk about that later. I have more wiring, more wiring, more wiring, some screws more screws and the manual I need to start going through this I've watched a lot of videos on installations on this receiver because apparently it's a pretty popular one because it's such a big display for vehicles and you can actually even use this in newer vehicles uh, because you can get an adapter or something that will adapt all the climate control and everything into this head unit so you can control your HVAC system on here and you can control like all the car stuff like the tire pressure monitoring system you can control on here it's really an all-in-one thing I saw somebody put one on a 2020 uh, Toyota Camry which is pretty crazy but it's a good upgrade for that pretty much cons considering none of the new cars basically come with wireless CarPlay uh, there's a there's very few that do there are some that do but not very many and that's a feature that I think should be readily available because there's a ton of aftermarket stereos that have that and I have no idea why they wouldn't put it on any car this is a microphone which I already have one in the car so I probably won't even need that it's probably the same because the head unit I have in there is a Kenwood already so I shouldn't even need that I think these are the actual screws that hold the display onto the head unit itself. So we'll set these here. And these look like the screws to mount the head unit to the bracket of the car. This is a GPS antenna. So what this is for is this actually uses, um, the head unit uses this for navigation functions. So it, it gets your speed and stuff like that. It can actually use it off of your phone as well, but and what I've seen, this makes it a lot more accurate. And then this is just a USB extension cable. I guess let's go over to the car, get the instructions, and then rip that stereo out and see what we have to do. All right, so this is the reverse camera wire that we actually put in here on the live stream. So once again, you can go check that out. This wire is for my dash cam up here, so don't worry about that. Um, this is the Kenwood stereo that is currently in there and it's garbage. I hate it. It sounds fine, but the controls on it are a nightmare. So we need to take this out. Now, when I put this in here, 
there was a bolt holding this whole thing in on the bottom or something and I didn't put that back in so I should be able to just do this and just pull the whole thing out. <laughs> so I might want to replace that with the new stereo because if that gets stolen that wouldn't be good but <laughs> I don't really go to a lot of places where people steal stuff so probably won't have to worry about that but gotta just disconnect all the wires behind here. So we got this out. Um, I guess let's take this up to the workbench and take it apart. So the nice part about this car is this whole panel comes off. So I basically can mount everything in here and get the screen on before I even put it back in the car. A lot of cars you won't be able to do that, but this one you can. So let's get a screwdriver and take this out. Yeah, comes to the front. That's what I figured, I don't know what's going on there. All right, so that one's out. And honestly, that stereo I just found in another car, so it really doesn't matter. So I actually have a whole nother one of these pieces, so we gotta take this all out too. See, there's little clips there, one there, and that whole thing comes out. So that's what we got to work with. And then I have this one that pops in there. All right, now we should be able to put this on like that. That looks really nice, actually. Yeah, that's so you can adjust this part in or out. It's already all the way in, but you can adjust it out further if you need to. I don't think we'll need to do that. I'm just gonna leave it all the way in. So let's put this in here and see how it fits. All right, it does not fit through there. So apparently we have to put this ring on after we get the stereo in. Okie dokie. So it should sit in there kind of like that-ish. You guys see what screws line up over here. So you can actually see there's those four screws that line up right there on both sides. I'm gonna actually have to remove those controls on that side, but that's where we're gonna put it. Okay. So I need to remove these controls so I can get to the side of it. We gotta remove these off of here. And that pops off. It's like I've done this before or something. All right, now we have access to both sides. So let's set the stereo back in there. And then we gotta line up the screws. All right, so we got three screws on the side. This one's a, not quite lined up right, and they didn't give you actually enough screws for it, so I'm just gonna put three on each side. I think that's plenty anyway, so. That is all in there. It's actually centered in there really nice. I really like how that looks. Make sure these are all nice and tight, which they are. So that's that. That looks good. Now we should be able to actually put this plate on here. Hopefully. Like that. That looks really clean actually. We should probably make sure the display fits on here as I would want. So I think that's what I'm gonna do next. Has this bracket on here. So we need to bend like this, and then we should be able to just slide it in here, like that. It won't actually bend all the way like that. Yeah, bend it down, and slide it back. So that's what we're dealing with. <laughs> you can see how ridiculously big it is, but luckily, it doesn't stick out too far to where it hides these controls. I'll be able to still see those. That's the one thing I was kind of worried about, but I should be able to see those and be able to reach them just fine. So that's good. And it's actually nice and low for the vents too, but I always have these points straight up anyway. And the other thing to think, keep in mind about this display is, take it back off here. You can actually slide this display up and down. It's actually all the way in the down position right now which I actually might move up because I have these gauges on, or these buttons under here that I don't want to hide and right now you can't even see them. So I'm going to take, 
I'm gonna take these four screws out on each side and slide it up more. I don't care if it's up above these vents because I always have these vents pointed straight up anyway. So I'm gonna slide it all the way up and then see how it looks. With all of those screws out, it can now slide about that much, which is quite a bit actually. I think there's three different positions you can have it in. You can see in there that the there's holes. So there's all the way up and then one down, two down, three down. So there's actually four different positions. I think I am going to have it in the all the way up position. I kind of feel like that might be one here. I'm going to put a screw in just to hold it in that spot and then set, uh, put it back on there and see how that looks. I can slide this back on here. So it does cover up the vents a little bit, but like I said, I always have those up anyway, so I'm not too concerned. Eh, I actually might lower it down because there's a lot of room down here. I don't really need to see that much of those, so maybe I'll slide it down one. Because I don't want it so high that it just is covering everything, so I'm going to put it down one more notch. I think that looks good. I can see the buttons. I can see the side one's fine. It blocks the top a little bit, but that's not too big of an issue. I think that looks really good, and I think that's where I'm going to keep it. If we need to get these screws put in here, which we should be able to just bend this down. Should bend, yeah, like that. And now I need to put these uh, four screws in, these Loctite ones. Oh, there's actually spots for six different screws. And then, so once I get those screws in, then this piece goes in here and gets screwed in. And this, there's actually, I don't know where, I think it's actually this middle part that it goes in and that's what activates everything. So without this, the screen and everything won't turn on. So we need to get this in there too. So I'm going to put all these six Loctite screws in here and then I will add this in with the two little black screws. Now we need to put this in. It just slides right in there, like so. And then there's two little black screws that go in there. All right, so that is in. I can bend this back and I can adjust that when I'm in the car too. But that looks really good, like from the side and everything. You can't even tell that it's like aftermarket really. It looks pretty amazing. And I also forgot to put the rest of these screws in the side, so I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, that is all ready to go in the car. Um, actually, one more thing I need to do is put this climate control back in. Now the fun part, <laughs> which is all the wiring. So most of these we actually won't use. The video in, we're not going to use. Front camera, rear, the rear camera we will use. There's a third, there's a lot of different cameras you can hook up to this. And it's made to be able to use like on newer cars that have like side cameras and multiple different cameras. You can hook all those up. There's a video out. I don't, I don't know. I think this is the rear camera we need. Like the video out, I'm pretty sure is if you have rear entertainment, like in the back seats. Video in, I honestly am not 100% sure what that one's for. Then we got antenna and USB. So these three will hook up. The rest we'll just leave here. And then we have on the bottom here, we have our sub in. This is an auto, uh, odd, ugh. AV in, so I'm assuming that's like an aux cable. Um, GPS, we'll need to plug that in. So I think for now, we're gonna go to the car and get this all attached in there because this is gonna be the major thing that we need to get in the car. All right, I did forget I need this adapter off of this wiring harness of the old system. And luckily I just used these uh, little wire nuts on them here so I can just undo all of them and take them all out and honestly I might just use those same ones because they work really well and it's nice for just having to redo stuff you can just take them right back off so now 
I need to hook this up to this. And there's gonna be more wires that I need to hook from this up to the car too. So we'll just connect the ones that we know we need right now. So I kind of divided the ones up that I do and don't need. So these are all the ones that we should be connecting. Um, I guess I don't need an antenna power. We'll want a dimmer, P cons, I, I don't know what some of these are, but this is what we're gonna hook up. All right, I got done putting all these wires together and I just wrapped some electrical tape around them like that and I can just leave that back in there. That should be good. So now I got to figure out what to do. This is for the amp remote control wire and then some camera things, parking switch, speed sensor, which I don't know if I actually need to hook this up since I'm going to be doing the GPS. Um, not quite sure about that. And then I have the reverse switch. So I just need to find all these in the car. But for now, let's take this to the car and go and figure out what we need to do. So I went and watched a video on installing this and you don't have to hook up this vehicle speed sensor. Um, the GPS antenna is enough to be able to help. I guess apparently it's to help with the GPS for the Apple CarPlay and stuff but the gps antenna as long as you have signal for gps it'll work and you also put this on the dash of the car so we have to figure out how to route this up through there and put it on the dash all right so the two things that i need to get hooked up on here are the remote wire for the amp which i just need to put connector on here i already have a connector on this one so i just need to put that on there so i can attach that and then this one is for the reverse signal. So whenever the car's in reverse, this has to have power so the backup camera will turn on and it'll display on the screen. And I should be able to tap into that right down here on the shifter. So whenever this goes into reverse, there should be some type of an electrical connection here that gives it the rear lights power or something. So I'm gonna take this apart and see if I can find that wire right here because that'll be really easy to connect to. All right, so as you can see, I have the whole center console tore apart and I have all this wiring tore apart here. Um, turns out there isn't actually a switch on the shifter itself, it's on the transmission. So there was, I looked at a wiring diagram that I had and there was a green wire running all the way from that to the back of the car. So I pulled this wiring harness apart because this is the only one that runs to the back of the car and there were actually two green wires. So what I did was I have my multimeter grounded over there to the chassis and then I just used my wire cutters to strip these wires back just a little bit. So you can see there that one's stripped back a little bit and that one's stripped a little bit. And then I just touch this to that and then put it in reverse. I get 10.75 volts. So that's obvious the light. Take it out of reverse, goes back to zero. So that is my reverse light. So I need to tap the reverse wire into this uh, wire here and then we should be good to go. I got the uh, GPS antenna mounted here. I cleaned that off with some alcohol and it stuck on there really good. Um, I have the reverse light hooked up. That's this one here. I have the amp wire hooked up there. I think all the wiring is done. I just need to plug everything in and set the stereo in here. And I also need to notch out the top of the that plastic piece for this wire because that will definitely get in the way. So I need to go see where it's gonna line up and put a little notch in that, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so here's the big event. I need to connect everything and set this in there. So, just start one by one. This is the rear view camera, and that plugs into there, like that. I don't know if I need to plug this in it says this is a trigger for the camera, but it came with the camera. I don't think this uh, head unit needs this to be plugged in, so I'm not going to right now. I'll have to wait and see if it actually does need to be, though. Um, 
let's see these are for the amp so those will hook into subwoofer and then we have this one which is for the microphone and that has a connection over here audio out mic so that one goes there and then we have this one which is the GPS antenna and that plugs in right up here it's getting a little hectic in here it's going to be fun to try to fit this in here that plugs in there um, let's see that's plugged in that's for the car that's all for the car those are all plugged in that's plugged in so really the only one we have left is the main uh, harness which is this one here so all right I got the antenna we need the antenna that's right here all right that's plugged in and then the main harness which is this big mess of wire. <laughs> really hoping I got enough space in here for all of this. Alright. Clicked in. Now I need to get these all plugged in. One of these is right on the bottom. <laughs> this is heavy. Oh, I gotta I got fish this H, or not HDMI, this uh, USB cable through too. So I can potentially charge my phone if I really need to. There we go. All right, got that going through there. Just a mess of wires. Oh, I don't want it going around there. You gotta come up over here, get over here. Okay. Now, the, har the original harness. Don't want to drop this thing. Alright, that's plugged in. And then we have one up there and these two. Not easy at all. All right, everything should be plugged in. Now, hopefully, I can wedge it all in there. <laughs> ah. There's a lot of stuff in there. You can see it's not wanting to go in, which I figured would happen. I need to Try to feed some of this stuff down through here or something. Because there's a bunch of bundles of extra wire in here. And some of them you can't cut. Like the GPS one, you can't actually cut at all for obvious reasons. No splicing that back together. There, I got that one down and away. So maybe we'll have better luck. There's a fan on the back of this for cooling, so we don't want to get that in the way. It's still not wanting to go. So I can actually get access to the that bracket on the bottom now, so I'm going to screw that back in once I get it all situated. It's in. But before I do anything, I need to test it and make sure everything's working. All right, let's try and see if this will work. Oh man, that's a good sign. All right. It's like we have to turn the demo off. Guess we'll just go through all this. American English. Looks good. Clock. 12 hours, GPS sync is probably fine. We might as well set it though. Oops. I think I'm central time. 
and then that looks good. Display and buttons, button illumination color. Oh my. Um, I don't know what would, I think red would really match the car. I think everything else is red. We'll just leave that red for now, cause whatever. Back, camera, rear camera interruption on. Yeah, so when we go into reverse, we want it to come on. Rear camera message. I don't want a rear camera. I wish you could just turn that off, but apparently you can't. Um, parking guidelines on. Sure, why not? Guidelines setup. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I can adjust that later. It's working. So the camera has its own guidelines and this has its own guidelines. So I need to get rid of the ones that the camera has because I'd rather use the ones that are part of this, which on the rear view, on the rear camera, there was a little wire you could cut to get rid of those. So I'm probably going to do that. So that's working at least. So that's good. Agree. There we go. That is the right time, so that's good. It Wow, it already automatically adjusted everything. That's kind of amazing because I don't have my phone hooked up yet. <laughs> but I should hook my phone up first thing, huh? But everything seems to be working. I guess we should probably try the audio. Um, let's go home. HD radio. So we need to go uh, to some station. All right, the radio does work. I confirmed that. <laughs> Audio settings on this are insane. And I must say that the screen is super reactive to any little touch. Like it hasn't messed up once while I've been playing with it here. So you can select the sub, you can select what kind of car it is, it's a compact car. Um, you can change the size of the subwoofer. I think mine actually is a 10 inch, so I'll leave that. You can adjust, there's, there's so much adjusting available on this. You got your equalizer, which the crazy thing about this is you could just like draw your finger where you want it and it just, it copies it. It's insane. I. <laughs> I, it's really amazing. And then they have just normal like presets, which I'll probably just use preset because I'm not too great with that stuff. And then you have like the position. Uh, that's the one I usually am on, so it'll focus it to that, or you can just make it all the car. You got the fader. So each individual source, you can adjust the volume for. So if the radio is always louder than everything else, you can turn it down. If your iPhone is a lot louder, you can turn it down or up or whatever. Um, sound effects, you can turn bass boost on or loudness or just simple things on here. And then you can actually save all these settings. So if the battery gets disconnected, you can come in here and recall a setup and it'll automatically save all your settings, even if the battery was disconnected. So that's a really cool thing. But this is just crazy how much there is in there. So I'm going to connect my phone and we'll see how the wireless CarPlay works. Alright, so it took about 10 seconds for my phone to sync or get synced with this. And then the Apple CarPlay automatically came up. And man, this screen is gigantic. I've never had a screen this big in a car before. And man, it, it's amazing. And it works really well. It, <laughs> it's really amazing and it has like maps and your calendar and messages and you have Sirius XM so I have Sirius XM that we pay for in our other car and I also get the app with that and now on this I can just select that and I can play all my music on here and I don't have to uh, pay for another thing and then I have Google Maps on here 
and I have the Kenwood app, which I guess that's just this, so. I don't know, is there, I just have to hit that, I guess? Yep, that goes right back to it. Yeah, this is, it's pretty cool. I, I'm very happy with this, and you can see it's not connected at all. So, that's amazing in and of itself. And then there's two apps that it told me you could get, and one of them is to change the background screen, which I really don't care, that looks fine to me, honestly. I don't mind that at all. But man, this is just gonna change this car so much. It's just such a big difference, and just having the wireless car play is the biggest game changer for me. I uh, That's one of the biggest things that I really wanted. Yeah, this is really nice. I can't wait to listen to some music with this and get the all the settings and stuff right, but we need to finish installing it because it's not actually uh, set up yet. So the nice thing is, so just for like, I need to go into reverse now, I can shift it into reverse and the camera automatically comes on. So that's really cool. And the camera looks fairly decent, honestly. It was a cheaper camera. Kenwood actually sells a high definition camera or something for the back, but it was $200 for that one little camera. And I'm not gonna pay that. I paid $50 for this one, so. But yeah, this is amazing. I just, ugh, it's amazing, that's it. <laughs> so let's get the rest of this back together and we'll be good. All right, so I wanted to show you how fast this was to start up, so. Turn the car on. The little jingle is my dash cam. And then this warning comes up every time, but luckily the agree button is nice and big on it. So it's really easy to select that. It's not like a lot of the newer cars where it's a tiny little button, really annoying. And then it comes up to this and then that's how fast Apple CarPlay wireless connects. I didn't have to do anything. My phone is still in my pocket and it just came up and it comes up to the last screen that you had up to. So that's pretty cool, but it's really good. I, I am very impressed with it. So then we have, I think, I don't know what that button is. You got home. So that's the song that's playing right now on the radio, I assume. So then you got camera, which I don't know. The camera doesn't work when I press camera, so I might have to look into that a little bit. This button is the car player Android Auto button, apparently, and then a voice to do something voice-wise. So it brings up Siri. I didn't get that. Could yep. you try again? I didn't. I know. All right. So yeah, that brings up Siri. So that's pretty awesome. The screen looks amazing. It's a very clean and clear screen. And yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Press this, this gets you to all of your other stuff. You can do mirroring with, wireless mirroring with Android Auto or with Android phones. You can't do that with iPhones. So it's just got a bunch of stuff in here. Um, I don't really know all of the stuff. A lot of this doesn't work because my car is not new enough for it to work, but like gauges and climate control and parking assist. My car doesn't have any of that stuff. If your car is newer and has that stuff, you'll be able to see all of that on here. Like the gauges and stuff, you'll be able to see mile per hour, RPM, gauges that your car may not even have. Um, it can pick up those sensors and work with that. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Sirius XM, I don't know. Oh, that's the tuner, the actual Sirius XM. So I don't need that because I have CarPlay and I already have the app on my phone, so I can just hit this and I can play Sirius XM through the app. I don't actually have to pay for it for the car, which is a way better option. And yeah, I guess that's about it. That is all I had for this video. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.